We pray the Sanctus during every single Mass. I think it's time that we took a closer look at this thrice holy prayer, at its origins and significance in both the Novus Ordo and the traditional Latin Mass, and finally, how to learn and remember it easily in Latin. Greetings, listeners of the Latin Prayer Podcast. Welcome back for another episode. I first want to extend my thanks to all of you who are listening to the podcast, especially those of you who are praying the rosary daily. The links for the daily rosary are in the show notes. Remember that Pope St. Pius X once said, if there were one million families praying the rosary every day, the entire world would be saved. If you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes, please hit the like button, leave a comment to show your support. It actually helps the podcast grow and succeed. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please do not hesitate to reach out to me via email at latinprayerpodcast at gmail.com. Lastly, if you'd like to support the podcast further, consider becoming a subscriber on my Patreon page. There are four tiers available to choose from. However, you can select a custom option, and with a minimum monthly donation of only $1 to $2, you can help me continue to create meaningful content for you. Before we end today's episode, we will pray for our wonderful patrons, their families, and their intentions. So thanks again for tuning in. Let's get started. Now, because the translation of this prayer is rather simple, I thought we would take a moment to look at its origins and its history and its significance. Now, the Sanctus, also known as the Angelic Trisagion, is a Latin adaptation of an ancient hymn of praise that can be traced back to the early days of Christianity. The term Trisagion originates from the Greek language and means thrice holy. It signifies the repeated declaration of holiness, emphasizing the divine nature of God, which is why we say the word sanctus, which is the Latin word for holy, three times. Sanctus, sanctus, sanctus. It's the angelic trisagion for this reason. The roots of this prayer can be found in the Old Testament in the book of the prophet Isaiah, where the prophet recounts his vision of heaven. In Isaiah 6, 3, He hears the angels proclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The early church recognized the profound significance of this biblical proclamation and, of course, incorporated it into their liturgical practices. Over time, variations of the Sanctus developed in different regions, but the central theme of declaring God's holiness remained consistent. Now, prior to the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s, the traditional Latin Mass was celebrated worldwide. And during this time, the Angelic Trisagion, or the Sanctus, held a prominent place within the Mass. It was resided or sung by the priest and the congregation during the Eucharistic prayer, specifically during the canon of the Mass. It is interesting to note that with the reforms introduced after the Second Vatican Council, The liturgy, even though it underwent significant changes, in the Novus Ordo, the new order of the Mass, it did not bring revisions to this prayer, which is very interesting because several other things, and I don't need to go through it because many other people have done this already, there were several other prayers that were changed. But for some reason, we managed to keep this prayer in its entirety. As we go through the prayer looking at the Latin words and how it translates into English, I hope that you will see how beautifully these words capture the awe and reverence expressed by the angels in Isaiah's vision. The prayer itself is placed at a moment during the holy sacrifice that just signifies profound worship and adoration in the Mass. This is the moment just before the consecration takes place. This God, who is almighty and all-powerful and the Lord of angel armies, is about to become so small and so degraded on the altar for our sake. And when we cry out, Hosanna, as we will see in the translation, it means something very specific. It actually has two meanings wrapped up into one. And we'll talk about that when we go through the translation. So, let's start at the beginning of the Latin prayer and see how we get the English. It begins with Sanctus, 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 which is, of course, holy, 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 this thrice holy salutation. Dominus Deus. So, Dominus means Lord, and Deus means God. So, we have Dominus Deus, and the third word is Sabaoth. Sabaoth 
is a fascinating word. We can go from Sabaoth in Latin back towards ancient Greek and from ancient Greek to the Hebrew word Tsevaot. Now, Tsevaot literally translated means armies. It's often translated as hosts. It wasn't used very often in the Torah or the book of Joshua or Judges. However, starting in the book of Samuel, the term Lord of Hosts or Lord of Angel Armies appears hundreds of times throughout the prophetic books and of course in the Psalms and also in Chronicles. So even though this started off as a Hebrew word, it was absorbed into the Greek language and then into the Latin language with very little pronunciation change. So Sabaoth means angel armies. Dominus Deus Sabaoth means Lord God of Angel Armies, or Lord God of Hosts. Side note, I prefer the word Angel Armies better than Hosts. I think it's a little bit more empowering and shows the magnitude of God's power. Anyway, carrying on, it continues. Pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's look at the words that we know. Celi et terra. That's heaven and earth. Gloria means glory, and gloria tua means your glory. So we're talking about heaven and earth and God's glory. So what does pleni sunt mean? Well, pleni should make you think of the word plentitude or full. And sunt is to be. So pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, is how we get heaven and earth are full, plentitude, of your glory, pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua. I suppose we could directly translate this as, full is heaven and earth of your glory. Pleni sunt, full is, celi et terra, heaven and earth, gloria tua, your glory. And then we have the word, hosanna in excelsis. I want you to stop and think about how many times you've said the word hosanna before. This liturgical word has its roots in Judaism, and of course we use it as Catholics. In Judaism, it refers to a cry expressing an appeal for divine help. It's crying out to God, save us, help us. In the Hebrew Bible, it's only used in verses such as help or save, I pray, like in Psalm 118. But when we look at how it's used in the Gospels, It's used as a shout of jubilation. Now, why is this? It's because the people who saw our Lord enter into Jerusalem saw their salvation at hand. They saw Jesus as the Messiah. This was a recognition that this is the one who has come in the name of the Lord. They were adoring him. They were recognizing him as the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Savior. It's almost like a sigh of relief. Finally, you are here. You are here to free us. As Catholics, this prayer that happens just before the consecration should be sending off alarm bells in your mind. When we cry out to God to save us from our sins, to save us by His flesh and His blood, we cry out Hosanna. We cry out for help to free us from our sins. But we also cry out recognizing that He is the Lamb of God, the Son of God. And so when we say Hosanna in excelsis, we're saying Hosanna in the highest, which is what excelsis means. And Hosanna is we cry out to God both as a plea for help and in jubilation because we know that he has come. He has made a way for our salvation. The next line is taken right out of the Gospels. Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. So Benedictus is blessed, qui venit, who comes. In nomine, in the name, domini, of the Lord. So Benedictus, qui venit, blessed is he who comes, in nomine domini, in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. John all use this line, Hosanna, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The last line repeats again, Hosanna in excelsis, Hosanna in the highest. 
So the next time that you are at Mass, and you are listening or you are praying along with this thrice holy Sanctus Sanctus Sanctus, this angelic Trisagion hymn, think about this dual meaning of Hosanna. Recognize that our God is the God of angel armies. Recognize that in his power and in his might he has come down from his throne to be with us, to make a way for our salvation, to humble himself and to degrade himself on the altar daily. And so we can cry out, Hosanna in excelsis. Learn this prayer in Latin, teach it to your children, and pray it not just during the Mass, but as often as you can remember. And as always, I'd like to finish by thanking and praying for all of our Patreon members, without whom I would not be able to continue making this content for you. So please join me now in praying for them, their family members, and their intentions. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster qui es in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debite nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostrae. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Until our next episode, may God love you and Our Lady keep you.